Since the beginning of the Ukrainian war, there has been a dramatic increase in immigration, immigrants, refugees coming into Ireland. Now this has been going on for years, nothing new about that, but it's gone up a notch with this Ukraine thing. Now, the pattern is the same in most places. You know, people basically wake up one day in a small town and discover that there's a huge number of migrants in the local hotel or community centre or whatever. Now, the latest of these places, or one of the latest of these places, is Kinnegad, a small town here in Ireland. Now, I think it's 150 migrants have been moved into the local hotel. It's a small town. So you, and of course, all of these migrants, immigrants, refugees, all of them, are men. And all of them are young or youngish men. Maybe they're mid-twenties to maybe their late thirties. Exclusively men. Now, of course, there's some controversy about this. And in response to this, there is a YouTuber called Philip Dwyer. He used to be a member of the National Party and he is now, let's say, a political YouTuber, a nationalist YouTuber, and he films this kind of stuff. But anyhow, when this situation arose in Kinnegat, Philip Dwyer went down, he's made a couple of videos from there, and the latest one was a video where he, he attends a, a local meeting. You know, somebody called a local meeting to discuss the immigrant refugee situation, etc., etc. But to make a long story short, basically what he did in these videos is he went down and seemed to talk about women or girls being assaulted. Now, I can't remember the exact words Philip Dwyer used, but the broad thrust of what he was saying was that, you know, you've got all these men, girls are already being interfered with, and etc, etc. Now, Philip Dwyer used to be a member of the National Party, and as it happens, the National Party have also been visiting Kinnegad going around and they seem to be very, very interested in the welfare of young girls, etc, etc. So, so here's the thing. Imagine for a moment here in Ireland. We have abortion in Ireland. People voted for it in a referendum. Now there are people who would like to end abortion in Ireland. So how do you do that? What do you do if you want to get rid of abortion in Ireland? Well, the very first thing you do, this is basic stuff. If you have anything like a political brain, this is very basic stuff. <coughs> the very first thing you do is you get rid of the anti-abortionists. Because the anti-abortionist group they are the, they're a godsend to people who believe in abortion. Because the anti-abortion people in Ireland, overwhelmingly, they're Catholic, conservative, very religious, often very, very religious and very traditional. Now the fact is, one of the reasons why the majority of people in Ireland voted for abortion well, because most people in, our, in Ireland now, they have convinced themselves that they are cosmopolitan. You know, they believe in diversity, inclusion, tolerance, they're LGBT, they're anti-racist. And so in a word, 
they perceive themselves as being cosmopolitan. They have abandoned their original, let's say, Irish identity and they have assumed this identity of being a modern cosmopolitan person. Now, if you want to convince hundreds of thousands of cosmopolitan people, modern people, diverse type people, if you want to convince hundreds of thousands of these people that they made a drastic mistake, well, you won't do it by presenting, let's say, a religious argument. You know, if you stand up in front of these people with a pair of rosary beads and maybe a picture of the Pope, they will run a mile. They will look at this image as they will see it from the 1950s and they will say, well, I'm not a person like that. I'm a modern cosmopolitan person and they will run a mile and you've lost them. Now, the point I'm making here is, you know, this is a political battle and this immigration thing, this is a political issue. And there are certain basic rules if you want to win a political war, let's say, or battle. The one thing you don't do, you don't alienate the people that, you, that you're trying to persuade to your point of view. Now, if you go down to a small village in a town in Ireland and you wander around it out of nowhere, if you arrive in a town, and let's say you are presented or you're perceived by some people as far right or called far right, you don't arrive in some town, go around and start talking about, you know, immigrants and being rapists and criminals. Now, the exact words that uh, Philip Dwyer uses in his video, I will leave a link to the video, the Philip Dwyer video below. You've probably seen it, but if you haven't seen it, you can watch it yourself. And there is a lot of, you know, they're all criminals, they're a danger to women. There's a lot of general sort of talk like that. And this talk will have a guaranteed political consequence. And that political consequence is that the ordinary people, if you like the ordinary decent people, who most of whom would probably have reservations about this whole immigrant thing. Well, you're going to alienate all those people. You know, if you, and, if you arrive in town and behave like a rabble rouser, well, you're going to alienate them. You're also going to give the enemy, if you're the woke enemy, you're going to give them just what they want. They can point to you and say, look at this guy, he's a racist. He's stirring up hatred against migrants. So, politically, this, you know, going to a town like that and walking around and talking to people about girls being assaulted and all that, politically, this is a very dangerous game to play. Very dangerous. And, uh, and you will, if you go in like a bull in a china shop and basically say they're all criminals, you're going to lose everyone. I can remember a few years ago, and I spoke on this before, there was a similar type of situation, some town down the country, I've forgotten, and the leader of the National Party, just about, turns up in town at some meeting, manages to get into the meeting, and he's a very powerful speaker, and at a certain point he gets this opportunity to speak, he stands up, and this powerful voice, and he's a very compelling speaker, and he speaks to the people on the platform, then he speaks to the people, the local people in the audience, and it's perfectly clear that he's winning them over. You can sort of see them leaning to him, listening to him, and he's doing a fine job. And then he stops, he looks around, he's obviously happy with the reaction, he takes a deep breath, and then he immediately refers to foreigners, immigrants, as criminals. And in the blink of an eye, you could see the audience turning off, you know, turning away from him. 
You know, this is a political battle, this whole immigration thing, this mass immigration, this population replacement, because that's what it is. And this issue of small towns all across Ireland suddenly being presented with hundreds of migrants, exclusively young men most of the time. This is a serious issue, this is a very hot issue. But if you want to win this battle, you don't win it by, as would be perceived, stirring up hatred against migrants. You put forward a reasoned argument. Now one reasoned argument, one very simple reasoned ar argument, is that these are all men. That's all you have to say. You don't have to mention rape or assault. You don't have to do that at all. All you have to do is say, these are all men. Where are their sisters? Presumably they've left their sisters back home in the horrible situation that they are fleeing. That's all you have to say. Anyhow, I'm wondering, as I tend to, I'm waffling on a bit, but I will leave a link below to the Philip Dwyer video. I will leave, also leave a link below to, there's a video, a news report on this from Gripped Media, which is an anti-woke media outlet here in Ireland, a small one. But, you know, these videos that Philip Dwyer is making, and he's made a lot of the videos sort of overtly, let's say, nationalist and, you know, calling for men to come together to protect women and children and all of this. You know, these videos are very entertaining. And Philip Dwyer, he's, he's got a good personality. He's a very good speaker. He presents very well. And he has a, a likeable way about him. And some of his videos are very good. But the bottom line, you have to ask, what is the purpose of these videos? If the purpose is to win a political battle, then you first have to make yourself credible. You have to make yourself seem like a normal, credible person, like the ordinary people you're trying to convince. And if you arrive in town and start rattling on about immigrants being all rapists and all criminals, you're going to lose. You're going to lose totally. Absolutely so. 90% of people will recoil from you immediately. So, as I said, these videos, the videos Philip Dwyer is making, they're good quality. As I say, he's very engaging. They're very interesting. They're very entertaining. And most people watch them by way of entertainment. You know, in the comments below, there's always all the people saying, we're with you, etc., etc. Now, of course, 90% of those people, they won't even go on a public channel. But, so these videos in large part are entertainment, but there's a serious negative side to these. And it's like what I was saying with the abortion thing. You know, the anti-abortion people, essentially they do everything wrong. Everything. And Philip Dwyer is essentially doing the same thing, and the National Party do the same thing, and nationalists YouTubers do the same thing. They shoot themselves in the foot. They defeat their own cause by, well, you know, calling all criminals, call, calling all immigrants, or implying that all immigrants are sort of, they're all criminals, etc. That's, that's not going to persuade people to well, to stand up against this. That's going to alienate people. It's going to alienate 99% of normal people. Normal people will just recoil from that. So, but, oh yes, I want to say, these videos that Philip Dwyer is making, they're just like, there's a whole list 
of Irish YouTubers over the last 10 years or so who've been making videos pretty much identical to what Philip Dwyer has been making. making. They've all been successful, they've all had a following, and they're now all banned from YouTube. And all of their videos achieved nothing. In fact, all of their videos were primarily entertainment. And the effect they had was, instead of people going out and doing something, people were sitting at home and watching YouTube videos. That's all they achieved. On top of that, most of these people in the past who've been making videos, like Philip Dwyer, they've, a lot of them have had some really mad conspiracy theories. Yet they also express a lot of opinions which will just alienate everyone, every, every normal person. So, you know, you can look at Philip Dwyer's video and say, great man, Philip. But politically, the result, will, will these videos win over, let's say, the people of Kinnegad? No. No. Will protesting outside the asylum centres sort of saying we must protect our women and children? Will that help to defeat this woke thing? No. No, if you want to win this war, you have to persuade people. You have to be credible. And if you go around essentially saying, stirring up hatred, as they would say, if you go around doing that, labelling migrants, this, this whole thing, this whole gig, you're going to lose. Anyhow, I will leave a link to the Philip Dwyer video below. And I'll also leave a link to the Gripped Media News Report, which is interesting. It's interesting.